Hey there guys, Dragon Master here, and I want to welcome you to Star Wars in Earth, Episode 8, codename Taking Back Earth. I want to say a few things before I uh, get into the video. I want to give a shout out to Tar Corn, I think their name is. It's kind of hard to pronounce. But I wanted to thank you for also the ideas you gave me for the image, so thank you for that. So that's really what I wanted to say. I also oh I also wanted to say that this will be the longest video I'm doing yet. And that's really what I wanted to say. Without a further ado, let's begin. We start off a day after the basic battle in space over Earth. The separatists have blockaded the planet and have begun sending ar well, I guess preparing all armies to invade Earth's largest cities. And Anderson has warned all countries to be on high alert and protect their capital cities along with their largest cities. And he also gets the UNSC forces to basically special strongholds they built across the planet to prepare in case of an invasion. He also orders his second in command, a man named well, he doesn't really have a name, but many people call him the Master Chief. He, for the past year, since the Clone Wars has begun, has been for basically training a special unit called the Spartan, who are basically super strong and faster soldiers. The Terrans have been experimenting, trying to make super soldiers, and this is one of their successes. So he orders them to New York, where the UNSC's Basically, like, base of operations is located. He also asked the Jedi to also help. As the Jedi evacuate the Padawans and younglings who were sent to Earth into these strongholds they built as they prepare. But it doesn't take too long before new gun race forces begin invading the planet. And as the Master Chief and Anderson arrive in New York, they can see the first wave of droids come in and they prepare for the battle ahead. But across the galaxy on Rakata Prime, where the fleet and Hackett are located, they are currently at the Citadel, as they call it, which is still not complete. But if you're wondering, many years ago, well, five years ago, basically, well, six, uh, six years ago, when the Terrans were exploring, they discovered Rakata Prime and found this ring somewhere located across the moon of the planet. It seems the Rakinans had been building some kind of space bridge or something, basically to deal with the slaves. It looked like a space bridge, but it was really some kind of like ring that distributed some kind of form of, I don't know really, some kind of gas or something that kills everything on a planet. They must, they must have realized that they could control the slaves by having a weapon over them so they wouldn't revolt against them of uh, the galaxy. So the Infinity Empire developed these rings. This one seemed to be the only one still working. So they melted it down, well, cut the r parts of the ring off, and then melted old ships on Rakata Prime to build the Citadel, a basically space station more or less, that's designed to, basically, if Earth was ever invaded, it would be a safe spot for them to repair their ships and prepare. They've also been using this to build more bigger UNSC ships that have enough firepower to rip the separate ships apart. So Hackett begins planning. He also asks Udini to talk with the Council of Neutral System at, to ask for their aid, and Udini does as... He's asked, but um, they don't want to help the Terrans. And they didn't like the Terrans from the start. Duchess Satine tries to ask them to help, but they can't. They refuse to send their people to die. So the Terrans are alone, and Duchess Satine cannot help them because she's dealing with Death Watch. And the Republic can't help them because they're too busy fighting the Separatists. So Udini goes back to Hackett and tells them, and Hackett is not happy about this, but decides that they'll have to do it on their own. But then Hackett comes up with idea. 
the recruit the Mandalorians from all the different clans that aren't with Death Watch to help them as they had a good relationship. And Udini goes off to recruit the other clans. But back on Earth, where the invasion has basically begun, it has been a week since it has happened, and the Terrans proved victorious. Special Terran soldiers, along with the Spartans led by Master Chief and Anderson, had won the Battle of New York, but it had been bloody. More than, well, more than half the city had been reduced to rubble, and many, I mean many civilians were killed. And the Separatists were still up in orbit, but this was a victory nonetheless. They decided to abandon New York and retreated to the mountains. Well, basically to the strongholds in the mountains. The Separatist Air Force had been basically decimated along with any artillery due to the much more experienced Terran fighters. Above uh, the capital ship of the Separatists on the station, the Trade Federation leader Newt Gunray wasn't pleased on how the events were going on on Earth. The Terrans had won every battle, and most of their Air Force had been decimated. So he decided to contact Dooku, and Dooku was surprised. Palpatine was enraged and not happy about this, and ordered Dooku to send more troops, or more droids to help, and Dooku grew a bit worried. As he was busy fighting the Republic, he couldn't battle two fronts. But the Republic was also surprised the Separatists would attack. But they couldn't do much. All they could do was watch. The Jedi were worried because the Padawans and Younglings were still on Earth, along with the other temples across the colonies. And speaking of the colonies, they were on red alert. They couldn't do much as most of the fleet had left. But they had a few ships that were still guarding their planets, but they couldn't help. So the Terrans basically had to do this all by themselves. But they were also betrayed, and they found out about Empress Tita betraying them, and they weren't happy, so they cut all communication with Empress Tita for that. So, as Dooku sends another army, this army has over 2 million droids, but I won't get into the how much of each unit, but it's a big army. And, they, and Dooku decides on a new strategy and orders New Gunray to send them to New York and begin the march, as they will conquer slowly, but to reduce every city they see the rubble. So this new, when they arrive, New York is reduced to rubble. Also, he sends over 50,000 vulture hyena droids that reinforce them with more ships, a bigger fleet, basically, to continue blockading the planet. And Hackett realizes this is going to be much harder than before. But he's optimistic and believes they can succeed. He waits till Udini arrives with the Mandalorian clans he could recruit. And it's another week and the fighting continues to go on with Anderson had formed his own militia made up of basically anyone who wanted to join. Children and... Uh, elderly people, basically anyone who wanted to fight. So the, as the battles continue on, uh, the, the fleet that Hackett has been amassing is ready for combat, and Udini shows up with uh, lots of ships from the Mandalorian clans that joined them and are ready. But they're not the only ones. The Jedi had also assembled a small squadron of Jedi starfighters led by Anakin, he was ready to save the young ones and Padawans, and they prepared. The plan was simple. They would use nukes. The nukes would be launched and would basically launch Kraden explosions, and then the Terrans would use the ships they had bought, left over from the Republic Trade Federation, basically anyone, to take the front attacks. And those ships were meant to be sacrificed, and the crews would afterwards set the guns to auto fire, basically, and they would head to escape pods and then be picked up. With the nukes being launched, they would cause the first wave of the fleet of the Separatists to be damaged, and then those ships can attack and take the front, leaving them newer, more stronger ships to be protected of the UNSC. So this plan is put into action, and 
basically on the ground, Anderson, Master Chief, and everyone assembles a massive army to engage the droids. And this battle would be in Chicago. So the plans put forward, the fleet launch basically launches his attack along with all the fighters of Earth and the other Hackett's fleet and begin a huge massive space battle over Earth. Luckily for the Terrans and UNFC, the plan goes to fruition. The, the nukes work perfectly, damaging many of the ships, and the sh- older like ships they had bought take the frontal of the attack. Hackett also uses the cannons that were on the moon base that the Separatists hadn't discovered, luckily, to the full advantage and fired at the se- Separatist fleet. The Terrans also decide to send troops to board a new gunnery sh- station, well, I guess Separatist Trade Federation Battle Station, I think it is, along with special Terran forces that ha- Anderson and the Master Chief sent. Both forces invade the ship and a huge fight ensues while the fleet's engaged and Anderson attacks the droid forces on the ground. The fighting is bloody and any fighters that they can spare on the ground are sent to space. Eventually, after hours of fighting, the basically new gunray ship is taken by the Terrans and he's arrested. And what was left of the Separatist fleet retreated along with the joint army on the ground on Earth, was destroyed. It was a victory, but it was costly. Even though much of the plan had worked, they still lost many of the ships they had built, UNSC. Along on Earth, millions or possibly even billions had been butchered by the Separatists. It was a dark day for the Terrans. So basically, afterwards, Udini, Master Chief... Hackett and Anderson would all talk to them, well, basically talk to each other about what had happened. And they all agreed that they needed help, even though had, they had won and taken Nuke Gunray, even had gained his ship but, and what was left of the ships under their control, because the separate, remaining separate ships had surrendered or been destroyed. They, had, they decided to melt down these ships for a future project, but still, they needed help. They couldn't continue to fight the Separatists, so they decided to join the Republic's war effort. They would go in front of the Republic Senate, Udini, Master Chief, Hacken, and Anderson, at the behalf of Earth, and offer a deal. They would fight the Separatists with the Republic in exchange for any ship the Republic could give them, Venators. Uh, Aquaders, fighters, basically anything, and they wouldn't have to pay them at all. And this sitted well with many of the senators who agreed. And since Palpatine didn't have complete control, this was very good. But Hackett and Anderson ordered spies to keep an eye on Palpatine, because Palpatine had fiercely argued against this, and they had some suspicions. But the Terrans would officially join the war effort, and that is where this is going to leave off. I'm going to leave this video off, sorry. Um, I want to say a few things before I end this video. Tango, I'm going to call you for short. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. I have some trouble spelling names sometimes. Also, thank you for all the good ideas. As I said at the beginning, I'm going to use some of the imagery, not all of them, but thank you for some of the ideas. And I'm so glad how the channel's been growing. We are at 80 subscribers, and yeah. That's basically what I want to say. I'm sorry if this video is kind of basically a few when I'm talking right now. I'm kind of a bit tired. Uh, I basically have a bit of a headache due to all the sun that's been going on now that it's summer. Yeah, that's basically what I wanted to say. So thank you all for subscribing to our channel. Please leave a comment down below on what you think of the video. And yeah, goodbye.